So let's take um, President Biden's performance out of the debate and let's just talk about what was said, the substance of the debate. What do you think was missing that you thought, hey, I could offer my perspective on here. I could offer a fresh take. Well, you know, I think uh, they both kind of hammered each other for the debts and deficits they create, but someone should have been on stage to say both of you guys actually have created, you know, nearly half of the national debt that we're seeing uh, is from each of you in your eight year terms. So uh, you're both really guilty of that. And neither candidate, while speaking about the Israel Gaza war, spoke up for the Palestinians, those tens of thousands of innocent people who have been bombed and airstriked in Gaza, when Israel could have taken a much more surgical path to respond to the October 7th attacks. And I think had they done that, they wouldn't be seeing this massive of backlash and these protests around the world against the actions they're taking against uh, Hamas uh, because so many Palestinians get caught in the crossfire as innocent uh, people who are being, you know, frankly blown up uh, by this war, uh, murdered, maimed, injured, uh, traumatized, and no one was there to speak up for them. No one was there to speak up to, for, for those innocent people. You know, I speak up for both the innocent people of Palestine and the innocent people of Israel who uh, faced a t uh, terror attack on October 7th. I both want to see a release of the hostages and a ceasefire so we can begin rebuilding Gaza and seeing a better life for the Palestinians. Nobody took that fully nuanced approach. It was very one-sided. President Trump blamed President Biden for what we're seeing in the Middle East. Did you agree with his take there? No, I don't agree with this take there. I think uh, October 7th was going, you know, was going to happen regardless of which of these men were president, uh, because frankly, you know, I, I don't see a whole lot of daylight between them. Both have used, you know, both have exported our militarism around the world. Both have uh, a foreign policy that is rooted in the American military footprint, whether it's selling weapons or arms to Israel or Saudi Arabia. You know, both of them use that military industrial complex power as opposed to diplomacy and, and you know, actually engaging with our neighbors one on one. Uh, which is something we want to see more. On the debate stage and something that you've posted on social media, the biggest contrast that we're seeing between both President Trump and President Biden and you is the age gap. They're only a few years apart. You are drastically younger. Aside from the age difference, what else do you think is the biggest difference between you and both Biden and Trump? Well, it's my political philosophy and where the root of what I believe comes from, which is the principle of non-aggression, that if you're not harming anybody in your own personal life, uh, your life should be your life, your body should be your body, your business is your business. And that's because we believe in the most local governance as libertarians. And that's actually your self-governance, that if you're governing yourself and not harming the civil liberties of other people, you should be left to your own devices to, to decide what you want to do with your life. And when you come from that kind of philosophical point of truly thinking about the liberty of each and every person, as opposed to the authoritarianism on the left or the right, be you Biden or be you Trump, that is a stark contrast in political philosophy as to where our beliefs come from, where we're rooted in, uh, in terms of our principles. There could be not a starker difference between a libertarian like myself and an authoritarian Republican and authoritarian Democrat like Donald Trump and Joe Biden, who view the state as the solution. In the wake of President Biden's debate performance, a Republican member of Congress, Chip Roy, called on uh, Vice President Kamala Harris to invoke the 25th Amendment. Is that something you agree with? Do you think his performance is worthy of that call? You know, uh, I, I don't know. And I think Chip Roy is doing something quite performative. In fact, uh, I, I hardly endorse Chip Roy's libertarian opponent in his race. So uh, I just met with some great folks in Texas last night, in fact, out there in San Antonio. Uh, and, you know, I got to say, while I think maybe that discussion has to happen, I think it's more a matter of he just doesn't need to run another term. You know, I think he's realizing that four more years is just not in the cards for him. Uh, I do. I think Biden can continue to be doing what he's doing for the last four years uh, for a few more months. Yeah, I think he can, because I think he's got certainly handlers around him and other people who have been helping him along. Uh, but I don't think he needs to run again in uh, 2024. I do think it's time for him to maybe step aside for a younger Democrat or for a Democrat who's just got more vigor. You know, you don't have to be younger. You just have to have, you know, it. You have to be able to be all there. And uh, Joe Biden's just not showing that. Chase, you are crisscrossing across the country. What's next for your campaign? Well, next up is July 4th in Philadelphia. We're going to be celebrating with the Pennsylvania Libertarians out there in uh, Philadelphia and Bucks County. And then uh, I'm heading to New Jersey. And then in a little bit, we're going to be, in, like I said earlier, in Las Vegas for the Freedom Fest, uh, free and equal debates. Uh, myself, Jill Stein of the Green Party, Randall Terry of the Constitution Party are all confirmed to appear. And again, RFK Jr., you can debate us. The real debate is in Las Vegas. If you really want to see the real debate, debate actual people, not just be on stage by yourself. And Donald Trump and Joe Biden, if you really want to show that you can hang uh, with these other candidates, with these other parties, you're invited to Las Vegas. Come on out. You know, the water's fine. It's a great time. 
uh, come and join us in Las Vegas. But until then, uh, I'm going to keep speaking for the American people. I'm going to keep traveling across the country and uh, not being afraid to get on any stage uh, that'll have me in debating my opponents and uh, certainly taking it to the two-party system.